This video is about inheritance and about how the subclasses in an inheritance hierarchy can interact with their parent superclass. So let's imagine that we have a hierarchy of classes related to employees at a company. So the superclass for all of those types is an employee class, and it has several methods related to the number of hours that each employee works, the salary that each employee earns, the number of vacation days the employee can take per year, uh, the kind of form that the vacation uh, that the employee fills out to go on a vacation, and so forth. Then let's assume that we have some other kinds of classes that are subclasses of the employee to represent particular types of employees. Let's focus on one in this example for lawyers. Uh, we'll extend the employee class and override some of the methods, not all of them. For example, uh, let's decide that lawyers have twice as many vacation days as other employees. So uh, whereas the employee received 10 days, the lawyer will return 20. And let's also decide that the lawyers make a little bit more money. The normal employee salary was $40,000 a year, but the lawyer will make $5,000 more, will make $50 or $45,000 per year. And the methods here that are not overridden uh, are inherited from the employee. So the lawyer will receive the default behavior for those methods. So uh, what we want to talk about in this example is what would happen if we made a uh, policy change that would affect all of the different kinds of employees. So let's suppose that the entire company decides to institute a $10,000 pay raise for everyone. So that means that the base employee salary will go up to 50K. Um, the lawyers are supposed to make 5K more than that, so they should go up to 55K. If I just go back to my code and I make the sort of naive change here and I change this 40,000 to 50,000, um, that's fine. That will be a correct compiling file. However, just making that one change will not affect the lawyer. The lawyer's still stuck at 45. Now the lawyer's actually making less than the the other employees so that's a mistake um, so what we could do is we could just make another change here to uh, set the lawyer's salary to 55k but it seems a little bit unfortunate to have to change this in two different places there's really just one piece of information that's changing here the base employee salary is what's changing and the lawyer always makes 5k more than that so what we really wish we could do here was we wish we could say something like take the employee's salary plus 5,000. That's what we wish we could say in this code here. And Java allows us to um, do that. Uh, what we would like to do is sort of call the get salary method from the employee class. Call the get salary method from the employee class, but then add 5k to whatever its result is, whatever it returns. And so you might think that you could say something re like return get salary plus 5,000. Or perhaps you might think you could say employee dot get salary plus 5,000 but neither of these is quite right um, the the employee dot get salary won't compile and if I just write get salary that will cause an infinite uh, call cycle where get salary calls itself uh, what we really want to do is tell the lawyer version of get salary to call the employee version of get salary the way that we say that in Java is by using the super keyword the super keyword is used to refer to behavior and data from the super class so if you'd like to call a method from your super class that you have overridden, you write the word super, and then a dot, and then the name of the method, and then any parameters in parentheses. So in this particular example, if the lawyer wants to call the employee's version of the get salary method, we just go to the code right here and we say super dot get salary plus 5,000. So now if I compile this code and I go to an interaction window, and I create an object of each type, if I ask that object for its salary, I'll get 50,000 for a regular employee. And if I create a lawyer object, and I ask it for the salary, I'll get 55. Now, um, that's not much better than if we had just written 55, uh, return 55,000 here, but you have to imagine uh, a bigger example where there are a lot of different kind of employee classes, and maybe we don't want to have to open up all of those files every time the base employee salary changes. You really want to be able to put that change in just one place and have all the different files update themselves properly. So as an example of that, we could give yet another raise. We could give everyone a raise up to 61,300, let's say. So if I, if I make that the base employee salary and I recompile these files, I don't even need to recompile the lawyer file. I'll come back here and reconstruct my employee objects. I'll ask employee Ed for um, his salary, 61.3. And um, if I create a, a new lawyer object and I ask the lawyer for its salary, 
then I get 66.3, which is 5k more. So that's great. The super keyword uh, allowed us to base the subclasses method on the superclasses method. So let's look at one more example. Let's decide that employee classes are going to add a little bit of functionality. Let's make it so that you earn more vacation days the longer you've worked at the company. In particular, each year you've worked there, you'll earn two more vacation days. And so now we need a way to keep track of how many years employees have worked at this company. We don't currently have that in our class files. So let's make it so that when you construct an employee object, you'll pass in the number of years that that employee has worked at the company. So if we go back to our code here, we will edit the employee class. This is not too difficult for us to do. We'll add a field for the number of years the employee has worked at the company. And when we construct the employee, we'll pass in a number of years that that person has worked. So maybe we'll call this something like initial years. And uh, in the constructor here, we'll set the objects years field equal to the initial years that you pass in. Okay. Now, uh, this will um, allow us to to uh, pass in the years for the employee. But what we said was we wanted to make it so that you get two additional vacation days for each year that you've worked at the company. So if we want to do that, um, the vacation days are right here. And normally you get two weeks paid vacation. You get 10 days of vacation. So what we're saying is we want to give two more on top of that for each year you've worked at the company. So what we'll do is modify this 10. Instead of just 10, we'll say you get 10 plus two more for each of these years. So 10 plus two times years. So now this change should be fine for the employee class in itself. If I make a new employee, now I have to pass in, you know, Ed has worked here for seven years, let's say. And now if I ask Ed for his vacation days, I'll get 24. And that's because I'm returning 10 plus 2 times 7 uh, equals 24. OK, but we're going to run into a problem with the lawyer class. If I try to compile the lawyer after these changes that we've made, we'll actually get a compiler error. Because um, unfortunately, when a superclass has a constructor like this one, the subclass also has to implement a constructor that supplies a value for this field. So in other words, when we construct a lawyer, we need to specify how many years the lawyer has worked as well. So we're going to actually need to come to the lawyer class and add a constructor here. So let me make a template for that. And inside that template, you might think that this would look the same as the employee constructor. You might think that we would write years equals initial years. If I try to do that, I'll still get a compiler error. And um, it will say that it's still confused about the constructor. And it will also say that I'm not allowed to modify the value of this years variable because it's private in the employee class. So private fields like this years field are not able to be modified directly from this lawyer class. So unfortunately, you can't have an assignment statement like this. What we'd really like to do is make the lawyer constructor basically call the employee constructor, passing this number of years up to it. And if we want to do that in Java, the way to do that is by, again, using the super keyword. This time, we simply write the word super. And then in parentheses, we write the parameters we want to pass. And so this is one constructor from the subclass calling a constructor from the super class. And so back here in the lawyer code, instead of saying this, we're going to say, I want to call the super constructor, the employee constructor, and I want to pass this number of initial years up to that. And so now if I compile this code, the lawyer will compile. And if I create a new lawyer, and I pass in eight years of experience at the company, then that object will return 20. Um, why do I get 20? Because right now I'm overriding uh, the uh, get vacation days to return 20. So I think what we'd like to do is return twice the normal amount of vacation. Um, the normal employee gets 10 vacation days plus two times the number of years. So let's modify this in the lawyer to say return two times the super classes get vacation days. And let's try this one more time. So the goal would be that uh, the lawyer would get 20 days plus um, four for each uh, year that has been worked at the company. So let's create this object again. And now if I ask Lisa for the vacation days, Lisa gets 20 days plus four for each of these eight years is 32 more. So that makes 52 total days of vacation. 
The last thing I want to speak about is that um, this Lisa lawyer object is still not able to modify the value of this years field from the employee because it's a private field from the employee class. In fact, the lawyer object still isn't even able to see that value or refer to it directly. For example, if I wanted to do something like two times years here, I would not be allowed to do that. This would not compile. It would say that years has private access. So the way to get around that limitation is to go back to the superclass and add an accessor method, something like public int get years, and let's return the value of years here. And by adding that method to the superclass, now if the lawyer needs that for some reason, perhaps the lawyer gets you know 10 vacation days for each year that he or she has worked. So now we can say get years. And because that method is public, I am allowed to call it. And so now if I make lawyer Lisa and I ask for Lisa's vacation days, I'll get 80, 10 for each of the years that she's worked at the company.